Who are the healthiest people on earth that have ever lived on earth? And who are they? Us? Our kids? No, nah, we've got the sickest, we got the sickest children in the history of not only humanity, but in the history of any species on earth, our kids are the sickest. They have more obesity, more diabetes, more acid reflux, more ADHD, more acne, more... Do you know that they can't find acne in any hunter-gatherer tribe? None. Zero. It didn't exist until the Whitey Plague. Interesting. Did not exist. And what do they tell you on TV before they sell you Accutane, which they're now having, what, class action lawsuits from all the people who committed suicide from Accutane and all the other problems it's caused? Eats out your guts and, I mean, who knows? But what are they telling you? They're telling you it's a hormonal problem, so it's just nature. So, you know, put this stuff on there. Or what's the other one? The, uh, what's the one that's always on TV? Yeah, but what's the, they call it micro something. It's the special stuff. It's just mint. I mean, God, if I wasn't ethical, I'd make a lot more money. But anyway. Um, <laughs> where was I before that? <laughs> um, where was I? Oh, yeah, acne, right. I couldn't find it. So I said to myself, if, if success leaves clues, and by the way, if you took one thing home tonight, it would be that success leaves clues. Now, it's very important how you define success. Please don't define success by how many chin-ups you can do or, you know, where you finish on the board that day. I only say that because I never get on the board, but, um, you know, or how much money you can make or, you know, how big the tires are in your SUV with the spinning rims or, you know, how big your stereo is, your TV screen. You have to really start to define success in ways that are going to allow you to do what? Get dopamine from things that allow you to genetically express your potential for what? Happiness. I mean, really what you want, remember you were genetically programmed for dopamine? That's why if you tell, tell everybody, what would you trade for your happiness? Would you trade money for your happiness? Would you? No, you, in fact, if I were to ask you what's the most important thing in your life, you would say your health. Why? Because you can't be happy without it. There's very little pleasure in life if you're sick all the time. So health is the resource that we require in order to do what? Get dopamine. You gotta go out and get dopamine. It doesn't just rain down upon you, believe it or not. You actually have to go out and actively pr pursue it. So the, the healthier you are, the more dopamine you can get. Anyway, success leaves clues, take that home. So I started out with this. My dad's a PhD biologist and I couldn't figure out for the life of me why we looked at humans differently than we did every other species. And then I thought to myself, wait a minute, what happens every time we take an, a wild animal and we put it in captivity? What happens to it? Well, it doesn't die, but it gets sicker, doesn't it? It never gets healthier. If you took a bunch of chimpanzees from the wild and you put them in a zoo, do they get healthier or sicker? Every time or every time? Every single time. What if you took hunter-gatherer humans and made them live like us? You know, like we've got some pretty fit CrossFitters, right? How do you think they would compare if we just dropped them into the, into the Papua New Guinea jungle and said, go? Would they immediately be the leader of the tribe because they were on the board all last week? You know what I mean? Would they? Because we can get pretty puffed up with ourselves, can't we, really? You know what I mean? But it, I'll, I'll tell you that from a physiological point of view, when they looked at the, when they looked at the physiology of, of the average hunter-gatherer, and I'm, I'm not talking like from copperlith remains, I'm talking when they went in and actually studied tribes that were still existing in areas like the Amazon of Papua New Guinea and the Aboriginal of Australia. They found out that the average physiology of a hunter-gatherer was equivalent to an Olympic decathlete, except they lived better. They didn't have atherosclerosis or any of the other stuff that can come. Isn't that interesting? The average was the cabin. How many of you have read the book Tribe? Just me. <laughs> Good that I can say anything I want about it. Um, great book. Talks about me a lot in there. But um, anyway, the, the book Tribe is written by this guy who was a. Uh, you know what are the, What do you call those? Uh, those supermarines or whatever they call them. You know the uh, Navy SEALs. So he's the equivalent of a Navy SEAL in the British Special Forces. He's an ass kicker, do you know what I mean? Not only was he, go, was he a member of the special forces, but this guy then became the trainer for the special forces. Get me? Who on, right? Super macho. So this guy, he's written this book called Tribe. He actually did a series on BBC called Tribe. You gotta get it, or get the book. It's just one of the most phenomenal reads you'll ever have. Anyway, this guy goes to Papua New Guinea. And he goes to Papua New Guinea, and imagine in Papua New Guinea, right? Like, I mean, they haven't had a lot of contact with the Western world. This dude flies in in a helicopter with a camera crew. He's probably pretty impressive, right? 
So he stays with them for, I think it was six weeks. He, he had a rule that he would only stay a certain amount of time because he didn't want to destroy the cultures that he was studying. There's only one place he's ever gone back to twice because he made himself a rule that he would never go back. The only place he's ever gone back to twice was Papua New Guinea. And he went back to Papua New Guinea because he felt that he was, had never had such love and acceptance and learned so much and just he just felt like he was supposed to feel when he's in Papua New Guinea. So he went back to Papua New Guinea for a second time. And you know, it's really interesting as he writes in the book because he, then he, and then again, he made himself a rule that he had to leave after six weeks. And at the sixth week, when he had to leave, he basically, you know, the tribe gathered around, you know, the helicopter flies out of the sky. Who knows how they, well, you would think of this, you know, if he had never seen anything like this. And the tribe's sitting around and the chief comes and they're gonna present him with whatever they present him, probably a gourd to put on his penis from Papua New Guinea. But um, <laughs> anyway, and, uh, so he says to the, he says to the, the, you know, he thanks them all, you know, they got an interpreter, and he says to the chief, is there anything you'd like to ask me? Thinking to himself, you know, I just flew out of a, you know, a helicopter came to get me, I lived with you for a while, you know, I had cameras and showed you your picture, all that stuff, probably pretty interesting. The chief goes, nah. And he's like, you, you know, he says to the interpreter, no, no, ask him if he has anything to ask me, if, he's, if there's anything I can, you know, tell him, you know, teach him, I guess. And the chief said, no. You know, you're brutal. You, your balance is terrible. You can't keep up on a hike. You don't know what to eat. Your clothes are wet and you're cold all the time. You really have no knowledge that's any use to us. But, you know, thanks for visiting. We love you. And the guy was crushed. But isn't that right? And this guy was special forces, you know, whatever he was. But the reality is when, when, he, got, when he actually got into that thing, he was so humble. I mean, they're swinging from trees, they're jumping on wet logs, they're in bare feet, he's got his boots on, his feet are, you know, they're my feet, I can't even walk on this rubber mat in my bare feet without screaming. And so they were just completely, completely different. And so it's interesting. So anyway, success leads to the most successful people in terms of health and the concept of what? Community. Two things that are really important. Health and community. You can't be healthy without a healthy community. It's not possible. Humans are pack animals. If you take, a, if you take a, an animal that lives in a pack and you remove it from the pack, what happens to it? We can measure its blood cortisol levels and their stress hormone levels, what do they do? They skyrocket, it gets sick, it doesn't thrive. And humans are pack animals. We walked out of the jungle onto the plains, right? And, and what, and what hap happened? We had to change everything. We, humans are, are primates. And when we walked, this is important because I'm going to teach you about in a minute how it relates to our diet, but when we walked out of the plains, or pardon me, out of the jungle and we walked onto the plains, we were an alpha male, you know, primates are basically alpha male societies. But when we walked out of the plains, we had to hunt big game. We had to become pack animals because we had to work together. Not only that, but we, it, you know that, that, that human mammals are the only mammal where the female is, is, is receptive to a male advance throughout her entire, entire cycle. What I mean, fellas, by cycle is, you know, the, the visitor. You know, we okay with that? Okay, good. Uh, everyone's kind of going, is he really talking about what I think? <laughs> anyway, so we're the only mammal like that. And, and the reason that is, is because we raise, our, our brains require so much environmental stimulation that it takes years over a decade before our offspring are able to fend on their own. A wildebeest dumps its calf onto the, onto the plains, right? And it's, it gets about four chances to get up, and if it doesn't make it, it's eaten. That's why I've been trying to do my kids. It's not working, but... You know. So think about that for a second. Our, the reason that we do that, so we need what? We need, a, we need to raise, a children, raise our children in a community. We literally need a community to raise our children, and we need older children to be with our younger children. We need grandparents to be around. That's, what, that's what's required, and since we've moved away from that, has it gotten worse or better? Worse. So much worse. But the reality is that when we move away, some, some very interesting things happen. The way, I'm gonna sway, segue here in a minute. I wish I had a drum roll, because I'm gonna get there. But when, when we moved out onto the plains, we had, and the other thing that happened was that every male had to have access to a female. You couldn't have an alpha-dominated one society because the males had to go off together and hunt. And one thing we know about men is if there's nine guys going off hunting and all the ladies are back at camp, what's the 10th guy doing? <laughs> you know what I mean? So it did, uh, 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 fellas, 
<laughs> you know what I mean? So an alpha, don't, an alpha male society doesn't work for us. So we needed, we needed, so we needed some very important things. We needed women that would raise children in the community and men too, but we needed that never to be seen as less than hunting. We needed to have a society that everybody contributed to the economy and that contribution was seen as equal. Equally important to what? To the survival of the community. So it made no difference. What the hell difference was it was if you could hunt or go out and kill something if you came home and there was, you know, you, you, you didn't have time to prepare it before the lions got it or, you, you know, you couldn't protect it or you didn't have anywhere to cook it or, you know, or your children were being killed. It didn't make any sense, does it? But the other thing that happened when we moved out onto the plains was we started eating what? More meat. We started eating a lot more meat. And if you actually look at what happened when humans evolved, there was more meat available than at, and, you know, at, what, at any other time really on Earth. The amount of large, well, the, maybe the only other time that matched that was just before the last ice age. And what most people don't know, by the way, is that the, pla the plains of North America were as rich or richer with large game than the plains of Africa. The number of, of, of bison alone was incredible. They killed them by the hundreds of millions. Amazing, isn't it? Anyway, so when we walked out, we started eating more meat. What happened when we started eating more meat? Oh, I know, we got atherosclerosis and obese because meat's so terrible. What happened to us? What happened? What was the main thing that occurred because we ate so much more meat? It wasn't that we got bigger biceps or that we got bigger muscles. It was that we got bigger what? No, fellas. We got bigger what? <laughs> bigger brains. Why? We got bigger brains because wild game meat is full of omega-3 fatty acids, particularly EPA and DHA long chain omega-3 fatty acids. And it's those omega-3 fatty acids that we can only get by consuming other animals. Yes, we're omnivores. We're not vegetarians. I mean, I love vegetarians. I eat them all the time. <laughs> but, but humans are genetically omnivores. There's no argument about it. If you want to be a vegetarian for whatever reason, I, I can respect that. But don't for a second try to argue with me that we're vegetarians because of, of uh, like, as a species, which is not. So as we consumed more meat, what happened to us? Our brains grew and we developed the cortex. If you actually look at the difference between the, 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 the primate brain and the, and the homo sapien brain, what's the difference? Thickness of the cortex, ne the neocortex, the new brain. Right? Everything else is virtually the same. You can go way, way back. As you get below that cortex, our instincts are virtually the same, aren't they? We behave exactly like most other animals once we get out of that prefrontal cortex and we don't have any inhibitions. 